Okay, here we go, episode 26 of the Escapade show. We are joined in the studio uh, with Caroline Tyler from Glasgow Food Intolerance Test. Um, I've been there recently, which is why we set up the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, it really changed uh, the way I look at food and how it um, you know, absorb it and, you know, different things that are happening with me, like, you know, inflammation or, you know, sore stomachs and all that. And me and Big Gal here, we we talk about, um, you know, the importance of eating, mm -hmm. the importance of your nutrition, especially if you're in a job that's, well, any job actually, you know, anything high performance, you know, it's linked directly. And, you know, and I've noticed a massive difference where I've changed certain things in my diet and, and stuff. So it's, uh, it's really, really helped me. And so, me and Stephen here being really interested in food and, um, you know, it's, in, it's effects on the body. We were like, let's get someone in who knows. Who knows more than us. Who we can have a, a conversation and a chat with um, and hopefully shed some light on some of the things that we are curious about. Mm -hmm. And uh, I maybe educate some, some folks out there that might be having some trouble with... Uh, with our well, diet I whatever, mean I think you know? before before we, we, we started chat filming before. yeah we were we were talking really just about how sort of in modern life so many people now struggle with diet and timing and like you know their sort of busy hectic lifestyles and trying to get nutrition in amongst all of that in the sort of modern machine world we live in is, is quite difficult so what why is it so important to you and like why did you launch a business in this sort of field of how did I get into this yeah, in the first yeah. place well um I've had a number of different careers, um, but a number of years ago, I was, let's say, about 15 years ago, mm -hmm. wasn't particularly well. I wouldn't say any major health problems, but I had lots of kind of small things that I could see were kind of heading towards diabetes or mm -hmm. thyroid problems, whatever. And I was always interested in how food affects us, which was kind of bizarre because I had a terrible diet. But my granny was a great one for if you had a headache, she'd say, what have you been eating? And she'd, she'd be bang on, you know, she absolutely knew. Mm -hmm. So um, I did a course in nutrition and absolutely loved it and started putting into practice the things that I was being taught and started feeling better and better and better. Um, the reason that I got into the food intolerance testing was, was, was slightly different. I've got two, two well, I say kids, they're men, they're 23 and 21. Um, and the oldest one, when he was about seven, was having kind of tantrums, or be, want a better word. He'd be absolutely fine and just going to go off on one for what appeared to be no particular reason. Um, but obviously there was a reason, so I eventually went to doctors and said, you know, there's something wrong here. And he sent me with my son to see a um, child psychologist. And we went in and there was a really awkward kind of interview carried out. And after about 10 minutes were sent away, and I got a letter to say, we think your child's got Asperger's. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, that was a kind of quick assumption, mm, you know. And it was such an awkward interview that I thought they probably think everybody's got Asperger's mm -hmm. and that's how they carry out the interview. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't actually follow that up at the time, but I still wanted to find out why my child was having these sort of um, meltdowns. And at the time I was running a clinic and we had various therapists that worked there. And one of them talked about this woman who worked with children and babies and she did a thing called cranial sacral and she was a chiropractor. And... Uh, for some reason, I just thought, I'll go and see her. <laughs> so we went to see her and she chatted to him and she examined him and she asked lots of questions and she said to him, do you ever get a sore head? And he said, well, doesn't everybody get a sore head? Every I might have told you this story already. Mm. Doesn't everybody get a sore head every afternoon? And I was like, oh no, that's not normal. He'd never once mentioned to me that he didn't feel well. Jeez, um, he just thought it was normal he being thought so it young was completely normal to have a headache every afternoon but he'd come out of school and just like be kicking me and screaming and all this and uh, so then the question wasn't why is he having these tantrums it's why has he got a sore head mm -hmm. and I knew from my nutritional training that it could be dietary but I didn't know what and I knew that you could be tested for food intolerances. And I took him to see, there's a woman that worked at Jeanne de Vries. Yeah, that's what my mum yeah, was talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. So I went to see her and she did this test and he was sensitive to dairy. And we took dairy out of his diet and the headaches went away and the tantrums went away. No way. And no. He's, he's hearing this. He's 23 <laughs> years old. He, you know, he's got a fantastic memory for football results. He will not mind me telling you this. Um, <laughs> yes. But he's he's fantastic. He's a really empathetic person. He's got great friends, lovely girlfriend, good relationship with his peer. You know, I mean, if, if he has Asperger's, it's not held him back. Uh, um, good person. 
you know, but that would have stayed with him. That was that diagnosis would have stayed with him through his whole life. That narrative, if you've been told yeah. that at one point in your life. Yeah. yeah. Um, I told him a couple of years ago, do you know that you were done? And he, we had to chat about it. And he said, oh, I feel really sick when I'm around cut grass. I said, well, you never mentioned that either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you would just be, you'd just be like on the ground screaming when we went to the park. And I didn't yeah. know what was the matter, you know. Um, so at the time I thought, gosh, OK, so you can't really advise people on what to eat. If, you, if there's something in their diet they're sensitive to. Mm-hmm. Then how can I say, oh, you should be eating this, you should be eating that, if actually you're when then... everyone's a, different. You know, when everybody's different. Mm-hmm. So I was just so kind of blown away by this that I went, thought I'm going to train to do mm-hmm. this. So I went and trained to use the equipment and um, put off doing it for quite a long time because I was quite nervous about it because it's quite a strange wee kind of device. <laughs> um, and it's not a medical thing, so it, it is unusual. And a lot of people think, oh, it's nonsense. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, we had such such a lot of benefit from using it and I trained to use it and I did eventually start and I've been doing it ever since and that's been about 15 years and the results that people get are incredible amazing absolutely incredible that's so that's, that's absolutely brilliant on multiple levels there isn't it some ways, yeah. you know, the, but you, the do, you do wonder how many other people have been given diagnosis and it's uh, actually down to see that, like that see that there in itself though like really to me it's like uh, I wonder if it's because I watched that Michael Moore thing last night but it's like it's really like it's crying out for like something to be made in terms of highlighting this mm. because being half Italian right I see that when in Italy right they're really quite big hypochondriacs right Mm -hmm. but their diagnosis in terms of doctors are amazing they really Mm -hmm. look after you Mm -hmm. and all I ever hear in Scotland is horror stories and I think it's just down to the NHS and stuff being so stretched yeah and it's mm. like how many people are walking out with a quick diagnosis oh it's because he's got ADHD yeah, alright absolutely. well that's what it must be because he acts like that and they might not even know it's because of what's in his diet or her diet or, that's right. insane man in many cases are they so yeah. stretched so are they so stretched because they put they spend an awful lot of time and money treat, trying to work out what's wrong without actually asking any questions yeah, well that's part of it definitely you know the, the, the peop, you know I, I hear this obviously people that come to see me have not got the benefit from the NHS that they wanted or they wouldn't be coming to see me. Of course, you know, I'm, of I'm the kind of last resort for a lot of people. But I'll give you an example. So there's a, a girl that comes to see me. She's about 22. She said her mum had been a couple of weeks, you know, maybe maybe a month before. And I was chatting to her mum about the effects of caffeine and how it can cause anxiety and all the rest mm-hmm. of it. So when the mum's coming back from the appointment, the girl texts her and says, can you bring me in a Starbucks? So the mum turns up with the Starbucks and says, do you know that this actually can cause anxiety? And kind of explained it to the daughter. So the daughter comes to see me and she tells me that she had been suffering from almost daily panic attacks and was being seen by psychiatrists and psychologists and been put through CBT courses, cognitive behavioural therapy courses, et cetera, et cetera. And she said, my mum told me about the coffee and I thought, oh, better cut out coffee. She said, I've not had a panic attack since. Mm-hmm. Now, if when she went to the GP and said, I feel really anxious, and they sat her down and said, okay, what are you eating? What are you drinking? Right, okay, get rid of the caffeine and then come mm-hmm. back and tell us how you're doing. She wouldn't have needed to go and see a psychiatrist and a psych- you know. So it's, they're very stretched, but they're very stretched because I think they don't ask some really basic questions. Mm-hmm. So, see, just again, talking about, like, you know, having yourself on the show here and because we are so interested in so many aspects Mm. of different things. I remember maybe five, six years ago has been in the doctors and I was sitting with my doctor who she's been for a long time and it was right at the time of really learning different things and alternative and, and, you know, she was trying to pan me off with some tablet for something and one of the things I did ask her before I left, I said, look, see, as a doctor, how Mm. much of your course while you're learning... Mm -hmm do you cover nutrition and she said probably about one yeah. percent and i said well look why i mean straight away when you look at the back of like a painkiller tablet it's like drink with a pint of water because yeah. you're dehydrated yeah. even they're telling you to drink a full glass of water with the tablet mm. so it's like i'm i was like how can you let me walk out of here with this and you've not even asked me what my diet's like mm. or if mm. i smoke or, or anything yeah. i mean there could be so many factors of yeah. what's maybe causing this but it's not the gp's fault because it's not it's not. They, it's not in their training i mean i think one percent is probably stretched now i think it's a number of hours wow. it's yeah, like yeah, it's 10 hours or yeah, something yeah. Um, how is that right it's seven absolute, years yeah. of studying and one yeah. percent of yeah. it is nutrition yeah. how can how can a flaw like that happen how can that not yeah. be put into the training pharmaceuticals yeah that's all, man. Yeah. I suppose. Cause, cause I suppose doc- it's a big doctors, business, doctors, isn't it? Man. Doctors have been trained to recognise or put a name to the symptom that you're experiencing and then work out what is the medication required to stop you feeling that symptom. Right. I suppose it's and a bit of a bandage over the wound. Yeah. It's not going to the root of anything. No. Yeah. no, and because they're not trained in looking at 
nutrition or lifestyle or stress or are you getting mm. enough sleep or all of these kind of quite simple things they they're not then allowed to even kind of comment on it mm. so even if they personally kind of know that something might help i don't think they're actually no. allowed to say because it's not been clinically proven yeah mm. um but i had a situation where um I was exposed to something for a kind of prolonged period of time that I was sensitive to and it put my body into such a state of stress that I ended up with kind of cracks inside of my mouth and a sore back and um, the back pain went on for about a month and some days it was quite bad and some days it wasn't so bad and I thought, I'm always thinking, well, there has to be a reason. <laughs> Things yeah. don't happen by accident or for no reason. Why is it sore mm -hmm. one day and not mm -hmm. so sore the next? And I drink a lot of water when I'm working because I talk all the time, so it's quite drying. But when I'm not working, I'm not quite so good at drinking water. Um, and it would be more sore in the days when I wasn't working and it would be more sore in the evening. And then I started to notice that if I drank a glass of water, it would kind of go away. So I looked up in line. Is there a link between hydration and Back pain. inflammation? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. And on the NHS website, I found a bit saying, yes, yeah, so if you've got, you know, inflammation or tight muscles or tension, you should drink lots of water. Now, has anybody ever been to the doctor with back pain and they've been told, go and drink two litres of water no. and see if it helps? No, but people in Scotland generally won't do that. That's no. a, they just won't. They just don't like point. water over here. <laughs> well, they, well they, they they will do that. They will do that if somebody explains. Well, the told reason. by their GP, maybe. No, told by their GP doesn't work. If the GP says right, go and drink lots of water, they won't do it. No, because people come to me and they say, "Oh, my my GP said to cut out caffeine. Why did you not do it?" I don't know. I just didn't do it. They need to. Somebody needs to explain the reason for doing it. Almost right. needs to get so, bad enough though for some people to change anything. To make a change, aye. Yeah, but I, I, th I think if I say to people, right, go and drink water, cut, cut, you know, and just some a lift of things to do, they won't. They no, won't. But do it's it. actually telling them why do they're you doing it. You have to say, okay, so your back's hurting, so there's inflammation there. Mm -hmm. um, your the tissue and the tendons are going to be tight and inflamed. If you keep them well hydrated, they loosen up, they become soft, they become more supple. And, yeah, then yeah. and they go, all oh, right, that makes sense. And if you tell them in such a way that mm. the wee light bulb goes on and they go, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> then it's actually hard not to do it because mm -hmm. somebody's you've actually got the now. explained it. You know, if you say, if you drink caffeine, it hits your adrenal glands. Your adrenals release the same hormones as if something was threatening you. It's part of your fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a very sort of animal instinct and your body thinks you're under attack. And mm -hmm. so then you're more likely to have anxious thoughts. You're more likely to feel your heart racing and not, mm -hmm. and, and you might then take that into a panic attack. So therefore, so you know, <laughs> if you stop drinking coffee, you'll feel less anxious. And when you explain it to the point that they're nodding and going, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, I get that, that makes sense. Then they're much more likely to do it. You're looking to instill change in that way because they've got the knowledge. They've got so the understanding, yeah. Act, yeah. But just saying, drink water, don't drink coffee. They probably won't. That's do not it. enough. They won't do no. it because you need to understand why. And, you know, the fascinating thing about this conversation, why we're obviously we're, we're doing this whole show with this podcast, because it's just the importance of what we're saying and how many people out there that we all know that just don't give this kind of thing a thought, you know, mm -hmm. and, and like they could make these small changes. Mm. and it could just sort, sort things out. Yeah. You know? But what people don't realise as well, though, is like the, the fact that we are talking about something like this, though, j like it relates to every aspect of your life. Mm. So if you run a business mm. or you are exercising or whatever it is, you're performing in whatever way, all of what you put in your body and how you fuel your body directly relates to your performance and day-to-day -day tasks mm. from picking up the groceries to yeah. going on stage and performing, yeah. whatever it may be as you do. Yeah. So it's like people may be like, oh, what does it matter? Well, it actually does. And I think a massive sort of misconception that's probably happening with people is because they always feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. So like your son back then, mm -hmm. or oh, is it not normal to have headaches? Yeah. If you don't know what it's like to be fully yeah. efficient, you, yeah. you don't think yeah. you feel any different. Yeah. Well, I feel quite fine. But you don't actually know what you might feel like if you change no, things. Absolutely. Yep. So that's, people are under this sort of false pretense mm. every day and mm. they go, well, I'm actually all right. But you're like, mm. well, you're actually not. You yeah, know what I mean? sausage in the morning. But you know, don't, like, I, I'm yeah. used to this feeling in the morning. I'm used to of grogginess, so, yeah. of falling asleep at three yeah. in the afternoon and crashing. And, you yeah. know, it's like, it's things like that. So I think that's what's just as important here is like, actually, this relates to every aspect of your life. Absolutely. And it's not just and how you function in its relationships. Yeah, yeah. You know, how do you go on with the people that you spend your time with? Because if you're feeling below par or, you know, there's certain foods, like if I eat sugar, I'm horrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the only way to describe me. I've got a really short temper and I'm just, I can kind of mask it because, you know, I don't like being kind of, un but inside in my head, I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so I'm moaning all the time. And when I don't eat sugar, I'm a completely fine. different person. 
Yeah. It's amazing the knowledge the you can when you dial into though and yeah. become more aware of your own needs and things that you might cut out and yeah. the behavioural change that you yeah. can create for yourself. It's insane. It's insane. I yeah. mean, what what's scary is like, see kids, like, I mean, we do so many workshops with young people, mm. right? So one of the last workshops I was on, right, one of the girls never showed up one of the days and she had really enjoyed it the day before. Mm. And I was kind of saying to the, the, the people there, I was like, you know, why is she not here today? Mm. So like, oh, she's got really bad anxiety. She's coming in at 11 o'clock. So she'll, she'll be in a wee bit later today, right? So she came in and I was like, oh, yeah, my anxiety is really bad, this and that, while she's drinking her second can of Monster. Exactly. And it's not even 11 o'clock. Exactly. And I said this to her, I was yeah. like, look, do you not think it might be related to the amount of caffeine and sugar that's in mm. your drink? And if you're on your second one, yeah. oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I, no, no, I don't eat any, you know, sweets mm. or that, so this is the sugar I'm getting, Greg. And I'm like, aye, but you're blasting like a full week sugar in mm. one can, and you're mm. having two. I know they've obviously cut back in the sugar with the... The sugar tax recently, haven't they? Like they, the, I don't well, know if they, some of them, but yeah, they don't. have. But the problem is that they haven't reduced the level of sweetness. What they've done is they've put That's in, well, they've, they've, put in a, a they've put in a spartan yeah, instead. Yeah. Which I, think, I heard before I heard about the, the horror stories with sugar. It was a spartan when we first started. Yeah, well, with the whole diet like, coke, yeah. the worst thing. pineal gland getting shut down and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like conspiracy. Head. Um, Iron Brew, Diet Iron Brew, they've taken, no, sorry, Full, iron full Fat yeah. Iron Brew, yeah, they've yeah. taken out a percentage of sugar and they put a spar team in the yeah, 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 yeah. So rather than educating people's taste buds to expect less sweetness, they've just replaced it with something which is equally harmful. Yeah, yeah. Just for different ways. So a spar team, then what is that? Do you know? About it's a about synthetic that? sweetener. Um, it's banned in certain countries. Mm hmm. Well, they link it. They link it to all sorts of cancers and all that. Oh yeah, yeah. it causes inflammation in your bowel. It attacks the nervous system. It's a neurotoxin, so it's linked to things like multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, Jesus dementia. Um, it's just in the food and drink. Yeah, and some and people. Your favorite beverage. See, if you get up in the morning, you have your Barocca, and you eat your Miller Lite yogurts, Aye. and you have your sugar-free chewing gum, and you have a diet coke at lunchtime. All of those have got aspartame in them. Some people are having huge, huge quantities of it. Um, I was surprised about Barocca. Yeah, it's, it's in Barocca <laughs> and, caf and caffeine. So people can have a Barocca in the morning, feel fantastic. <laughs> and you go, yeah, you've just had so just you a, just a shot of caffeine. <laughs> of course, you feel fantastic. Oh, <laughs> no, but this is it. This is how they mask so many things, though, isn't it? It's like they replace it with something, and that's why you're yeah. getting that feeling. Yeah. Because caffeine is a drug like yeah. anything yeah. else that needs regulated yeah. and understood better. And it's like, I don't know, man. Uh, I, I used to live on a diet of caffeine and sugar, I didn't drink any water. I would get up in the morning, have no breakfast because it made me feel sick, and I would have coffee, Danish pastry, another cup of coffee, baguette, cup of coffee, another Danish pastry, bar of chocolate on the way home from work, and then I'd have a decent dinner, so a homemade, nice dinner, and then would have half a box of Maltesers and half a bottle of wine, yeah. and that was my diet. Mm -hmm. And now what, what sounds shocking. like actually no, pretty normal, much ninety five percent normal people's <laughs> diet. people, no, hundred percent yeah. the beige, of it. the beige diet, all guilty yeah. of it. Yeah. But see, obviously, I knew before coming t to see mm. you that things like, uh, I know Gal loves it, that we have a good laugh about it, like, you know, the Italian pastries, you know, it's a big, big over there. But even here, like, uh, yeah, you know? I used to eat them. I don't know, I've not touched them because it's like, see, if there's anything that kills me, yeah. it's a pastry. Yeah. That I just know, it's just like attacks my stomach. Yeah. Do you know I what I mean? I just couldn't live on, I couldn't. I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> just, my, my energy would just do this all day. Oh, you can't see that, but it would just go up yeah, and yeah. down, up and down. And I would do that thing where the coffee would be like the upper, and then the sugar actually makes me crash, and and the, the baguette would make me crash. And then I need a cup of coffee to bring my energy back up. And then when I stopped, well, the first thing I ever did was stop drinking coffee. And I realised that when I had a sandwich lunchtime, I could literally fall asleep. Yeah. I mean, I actually wow. couldn't have a conversation if I'd just eaten a, a sandwich because my energy just it hits the floor and yeah. it's almost like I've been drugged. Mm -hmm. So, then so went, what's right. that down to? I've got a massive wheat sensitivity is, right. is what it's down to. Um, it's probably a combination of blood sugar spiking and then the drop that comes afterwards. And also, um, for me, I think I'm really sensitive to the pesticides that you get in wheat. Because if I eat organic wheat, it's not it's not I'm the same. You, in yeah. that regards. Or some sort of emulsifier or something that they put in, mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. supermarket breads. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But that's quite common and people often do this, this wheat caffeine kind of combination. Yeah. where they get into the habit of drinking lots of cups of tea or lots of coffee because they've got a wheat sensitivity. And so they get up in the morning and they have a wheat specs and a cup of tea or toast and a cup yeah. of tea and then, you know, 
coffee after their lunch and mm-hmm. and if you take and, and the coffee's causing a huge amount of stress because of the caffeine um, but the, the wheat is causing a lot of stress as well mm-hmm. and so they end yeah. up with thyroid problems or anxiety or bowel problems yeah, or whatever yeah. but it's it's that kind of combination yeah. that goes together. It speaks to me so much because like, I spent a lot of my time getting up in the morning having my healthy whole wheat, whole, whole, whole wheat bread <laughs> uh, with poached eggs nice and healthy mushrooms yeah. and a black coffee nice yeah. and healthy because yeah. I'm not getting milk in it do you know what I mean and the water yeah but I couldn't work out and I was like I, I'm eating what I mm. thought was healthy mm. yeah, yeah. ish mm. but it's yeah. not do you know what I mean and, and because of that weak sensitivity and the, the caffeine yeah. interaction yeah. it was like I need to do something about this this is causing me serious yeah. issues here you know and then now when I have a breakfast like this morning I cooked for the guys and it was just eggs spinach avocado and a bit of hummus mm. A bit of olive oil, mm-hmm. and, you feel and like I'm absolutely, I'm, yeah, I'm fine. clean. I don't feel that like I've ate anything, yeah. but I yeah. have, and I'm, I'm yeah. good for and the next few hungry, hours. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? I remember it's years and years and years ago, a friend of mine went over to America and came back talking about the Atkins diet. Now I'm not, and I know I don't agree with any of those kind of things, to be honest. But she came back talking about the Atkins diet. I've never been on a weight loss diet because I find it quite. Um, I just don't see the point of it. And there was a time in my twenties when I was pretty overweight, but I never went on a weight loss diet because I'm more concerned with just how do you feel kind of Are you healthy? healthy you yeah, know yeah. that's what matters but she came back with this thing about atkins and she talked about the carbohydrates and she was working as a um, midwife and she was doing night shifts and things and she said and i'll never forget this, one of the things she said i notice when i don't eat carbohydrates is that my energy just stays really really good and i was driving from glasgow to london and I thought, oh, well, normally my energy would be like falling asleep at the wheel. So I thought, well, I just won't eat any carbohydrates. And I, I think I had bacon eggs every, <laughs> every, um, you know, um, what do you call these? What do you call these things? And like the stops. Stops, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which I wouldn't eat bacon now, but that's what I did then. Mm-hmm. And I remember just like clear as a bell, like focused. Yeah for you know the whole trip down it yeah. was dark it was night time when i was driving and you were fine. i was absolutely fine but see if i'd been eating sandwiches yeah. and bread and stuff Throw a bit of bread in there i would have been like coffee and you know That's tired mental, and it's like and I've, got, I've been right right yeah. on up at this you know about mm. the bread thing and yeah. it's like that you all say to me that you're so sensitive to like everything you're, yeah. you're connected to your to your body you know yeah. it's like, Everyone needs, I, it's I, I like, can tell <laughs> see by cutting out yeah. that type of bread yeah honestly night and day and and it's not like cutting out all bread though there's like uh, the sourdough bread yeah. that's made properly mm-hmm. and uh, the Wilson Street Pantry where I go I've told mm-hmm. you about that before yeah. absolutely the same though I don't crash after yeah. the breakfast yet. Totally I eat two feel. big slices of yeah. it yeah. and yeah. I'm good and you're fine yeah. it shows you though yeah. it's like a state that I suppose the Atkins diet is quite close to like um, a ketogenic diet isn't it where you're like in a state of ketosis and you're burning off yeah. your own fat your body's yeah. own and fat I don't, I don't agree with that at all mm-hmm. I don't think that's healthy um but that was just the thing that I do remember from my friend telling me about that and trying it. And that was the first yeah, time. Yeah. That was probably the first time since I was like eight weeks old <laughs> that I hadn't had any carbohydrates. Yeah. Wow. When I say carbohydrates, I mean I hadn't yeah. had any, you know, starch, like wheat or whatever. Yeah, yeah, bread. Probably and the, stuff. Fir- the first time that ever happened. Because they say that the f- that your fat burning instead of the carbs burning is more efficient fuel. That's why you're maybe more energetic. What's the basis that's, of the ketogenic? Because that, that's that it's like no sugar and no carbs. Is the is, is the, that, uh, yeah, and, and then basically when your body's in that state of ketosis, it's like it's burning off of your fat as opposed to using the the glucose yeah, from the. Yeah, but long term, I'm not sure that it's a healthy. I mean, the thing about diets and what have you is you you can read very um, sort of good evidence for two things that are completely contradictory. Of course, of course. I think it's moderation <laughs> really, with no, things, isn't it? It's moderation. It really depends on who's done the research. Um, but I do think if you, I just like to think, well, you know, what would our ancestors really have been eating? It's mm-hmm. um, a great way to look at it. What was my granny eating? To be perfectly honest, my granny was very healthy. Um, I think that one of the big issues that we have nowadays is that people don't actually take responsibility for what they're putting in their bodies for the simple fact that they don't actually read the ingredients on things. Mm-hmm. And before people start doing kind of weird ketogenic diets and things, I think the first stage is to actually be just to look and see what's in your food mm-hmm. yeah. and think, okay, so here's a loaf. Let's look and see what's in it. Okay, there's like, you know, 20 ingredients mm-hmm. or you go to the place that you and go. And there's four ingredients. Probably not even that. There's yeah. probably, it's probably if it's a, a sourdough bread, mm-hmm. there'll be wheat and salt and water mm-hmm. and it'll be presumably organic wheat mm-hmm. and there's nothing else in yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's a... It's almost like they shouldn't call supermarket bread bread. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because mm. it's not, you know? But it's yeah, like, it's that, even that ownership to give to people, though, it's like, look at it like, can I use an agreement online? Like, do you accept? Oh, I've never read it. <laughs> exactly. Read it so it's like, even when you put the information, obviously, though, they're but a little are, bit, they're more pages. mischievous, right? They're, 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 they're more ominous, uh-huh. right? But <laughs> you get what I mean? It's like, even yeah. when the information is there, smoking kills, gives a 20 pack of Marlboro, yeah. mate. It's like, you know, sometimes, again, I think it's more down to, what you touched on earlier is like them knowing what and why yeah. it happens because you can say smoking kills and show you a horrible picture but people are you know it's yeah. still the biggest killer but when when it comes to smoking people have different reasons for smoking and they have an awful lot of emotional connection with it and that sort of thing and so people will because i used to smoke you're quite happy to go like it won't happen to me um with food though people mm. can often and I, I hear this all the time people think they're making a good choice and they're quite they, they think they're being quite conscious of what they're eating and they think they're making good choices but they're basing those choices on the marketing mm-hmm. so granola <laughs> well <laughs> diluting juice is probably the best illustration of this so of all the people that i see i would say about eight out of ten people drink diluting juice oh definitely and they will, they'll drink it every single day and they'll give it to their kids and they've had it for years. And you go into the supermarket and there's like almost an entire aisle dedicated. Mm. It's a big thing for people. And so I will say, okay, so what kind is it? And they will kind of quite proudly tell me that it's, oh, it's sugar-free. What's the sugar-free Robinson's? Because it says in the front it's Robinson's. And I say, so what kind of sweeteners in it? Now, I'm not exaggerating, not a single person, and we're talking about thousands of people, has ever been able to tell me what sweetener is in their diluting juice. And all they have to do is turn it over and read what's on the back. And we're talking about a few lines of text, so we're not talking about user agreement. It's wow. <laughs> sugar-free, so I know, it's fine. I know. And so a lot of what I'm doing is explaining to people that you have to, you have to look and see what's in things. Mm-hmm. Don't trust what it tells you on the front. That's what they put there because they're advertising and they want you to buy it. You need to take responsibility and turn over and say, well, what am I actually buying? What's mm-hmm. here? And... Um, a lot of the one of the other things I sort of explain to people is that if they are going to take wheat out of their diet, for example, you can go to the supermarket and you'll see. I've probably said this to yourself, Stephen. There's the free from section, mm-hmm. and people think, oh, it's free from, and therefore it must be healthy. It's not. These are highly processed foods that just happen to be made without the use right. of wheat or gluten or dairy, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, w- I was in Sainsbury's recently, and. Um, I buy oat milk, so I was buying it from the kind of free from section, and they had these kind of wrap things that were, one was kind of pink and one was green, and it was one was made with beetroot, one was made with kale. And my husband, who's always trying to find things for me to eat, said, oh, look, you can have them. And so I, my mum laughed at me because, oh, we always want to know what's in things. But I picked it up and went, let's see what's in it. And honestly, the list of ingredients covered almost, the, you know. Now, when you, it's made with a beetroot. When, <laughs> when, you compare, <laughs> when you compare that with the organic sourdough bread... Yeah which was made over generations by people who were, you know, they'd worked out how to make bread using very... They didn't mm-hmm. go into a laboratory and go, right, you know, what chemicals... How do we replicate <laughs> how do we, exactly, a crust? How do we replicate... How do we <laughs> make no, something that looks absolutely. a bit like, a, you know, like bread? Uh-huh. That's so true. It's, it's a totally different thing. This is not a food that they're selling. This is a chemical compound, mm-hmm. which they're, they're producing to try and meet a need. Mm-hmm. But in actual fact... You don't need to buy a beetroot flavored wrap. You you can eat a diet that doesn't contain you wheat. Put beetroot in your wrap. Yeah, just eat beetroot basically. But see, see, the <laughs> thing is though, right? Is this because of the world's population being too big, trying to service demand? Because if we were to take it back and try and eat as much as like farm to table, is that very difficult to achieve with nearly eight billion people on the earth now, with the demand so high and the fast living and the five six day work week? 40 to 60 hours a week you know i think it i think on a a global level yes it probably is Mm -hmm. but i think if you look at where we live in scotland we could achieve it we have you know we have fish and we have lamb and we have um root vegetables loads of land you know land to grow things and there was a time when people lived here perfectly successfully without bringing mangoes from you know the other side of the world and you I know, agree, we, totally. We expect now that we can go up in the supermarket and buy strawberries at... Sevilla you know, oranges. You know, every yeah, day of yeah. the year. We have to talk about that great a lot, yeah, I think. Right. So, yeah, I don't think it's possible to... You, obviously, you can't produce all that food in this country, but mm-hmm. you can pro- you can produce enough food for us to live on because people did it for generations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, is it just what too greedy now? 
I think I, I think it's a, a lot of variables. I think. Yeah, oh, there is, of course. The, the, the supermarkets they they Marketing they and seem all to sort of take the view that oh, there's a demand for whatever it is, but they they create the demand in the first place. Yeah. So they they bring yeah. in something and then that people go oh though. you know so like I eat a lot of avocados. Um, but we shouldn't have them. But we shouldn't have them. <laughs> <laughs> so I, d- I demand <laughs> oh my, my avocados, and if I don't get an avocado that's nice and, and perfectly right, then I'm not happy, you know. So you know, I've, you know, I'm exactly the same. I demand an avocado, and I expect to be able to eat it every single day of the year. Mm-hmm. It's just but I, sh- I, sh- just can't be good. I shouldn't be eating it at all. I should be no, living in potatoes. And, and you know what you touched on there <laughs> earlier is like there was a time where it was farm to table, and it was yeah. everything was fine. Yeah. And probably the stats of all these diseases and heart problems and mm. things like that. Mm. We're nowhere near what they are now Absolutely when not. that was going on. No. Yeah. So there's a clear link yeah. there with yeah. what's happening, whether it's a yeah. mixture of the office job, the posture, with the the kind of the, 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 the less active people are yeah. now so much as coffee. well. The coffee constantly, mm. barely really any water to lubricate your, your body mm. as well, you know. I mean when I'm up to the call centre, most of the people, including myself, would never eat breakfast. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Their breakfast was was a fag and a coffee, mm, mm. and then you're in there that's, until that's, eleven. That's across 12, the board. Then you're going to Greg's and getting a you know yeah. some processed that's thing and a board. steak bake and yeah. all that, yeah. and it's like yeah. no wonder like what <laughs> it's. But people don't look at diet that seriously. I don't. But think. this is the reason, though, Gal, why we're passionate about this because mm. you know because our network is obviously started off music production. Mm-hmm. We've been doing radio shows and stuff over the yeah. years and all that. So this is something that we find you know really interesting. And the reason we're doing this is to try and, you know, if we change one to ten people's minds from this conversation, it's like we're part of actually trying to educate people as well. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the least we can kind of do, you know, because it's it's very rewarding. Yeah. The reason why I've done what I do for so long is actually because people come and most people that come now know somebody who's been where in the beginning they didn't you know it's a kind of new thing for them but most people come and they know something that's been and they'll come and they'll say oh you saw my friend or my you know my auntie's hairdresser son or something maybe some sort of strange connection and oh my god it was life changing now I haven't changed their lives they've done it mm-hmm. but I have in some way yeah. given them information Again, for, in, them such the a, in such a way that, in, that you know they felt that they were able to do that mm-hmm. so that's a big part of what I'm trying to do is trying to help the person leave thinking I can do this mm-hmm. <laughs> I can make because it's quite big changes for people mm-hmm. But when, you know, their eczema's cleared up and their migraines have stopped and somebody's arthritis goes away and, How can you, know, you argue with that? Yeah, and you think, well, God, that's so worthwhile. And if that person then goes, in, you know, quite often I'll work my way through an entire office because <laughs> one person's come. <laughs> and then it stems. And then they start eating differently and people go, oh, my God, she looks fantastic. And, you know, she's slimmed down without eating what less food. What are you doing? What are you doing? Ah, what well, yeah. is that? <laughs> yeah, and they come in and they go, why, well, you know, and then and then it, and then it, it, it spreads. And, mm-hmm. it, you know, and it just takes one or two people to start going, well, I'm going to drink water, I'm not going to drink fizzy juice. And then mm-hmm. somebody it else does it and somebody else does it, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, can you talk us through the test? What was <laughs> a typical test. thing if someone so people don't know that want because like for myself, I'm interested. Yeah. I'd love to come and do. Okay. So it's like to walk me through it. What What do I do? Okay. Yeah. So when the person comes in, I will um, initially ask them what the problem is because there'll be something specific that they've come mm-hmm. about and get some details about that. And it's I kind of like to let them talk as much as they want about it because a lot of what people's experiences is going to see doctors or consultants who don't have the time that I have you know I have an hour and 15 minutes with people most people go to the doctors like seven minutes or yeah, something so you, you can them. listen to them so I can listen to them which can make a big difference and while while they're talking I am kind of trying to join dots and trying to work out what's actually going on and when it started and what what could be the kind of underlying cause so I'm 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 doing a little bit of detective work. So I might ask questions that the person might think, what does she ask that for? Um, and I want to know a kind of overall picture, like how much stress are they under and what, you know, do you work in a call centre? All oh, right, okay, so you're working in an environment that's air conditioned. You might be working with the public or not being very nice to you. Mm-hmm. You're working in a room that's full of computers. Mad, you probably don't get any natural movement. daylight. Yeah, yeah. You've got fluorescent lighting. So that's different from somebody who's maybe at home with their kids, you know, mm-hmm. so it's a different lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to know if they had any operations on medication, contraception, if it's fem- female client. Um, have they had antibiotics? Were they born by C-section, normal delivery? Because that makes a difference to your microbiome, your, your gut flora when you're born. 
um, and I'm piecing all this together. And then very often I'll say to people, so is there anything else that's concerning you health-wise? And often they go, no, I'm fine, everything's fine. And then I go, right, okay, let's ask a few questions. Do you ever get any headaches or migraines? Oh, yes, I do. do you ever, and you go through, and it turns out that things that they think are not a problem, mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, I've got a bit of eczema or... Again, they just think you know, it's normal think it's because normal. they're used to yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's normal. Um, weight's gone up and down or they they don't sleep well or whatever. So we, I get a kind of whole picture and, and then we go through their diet and I'll ask them what they drink each day and... Um, have to be quite specific you know if they say tea i need to know how many cups and has it got caffeine in it what do you put in it because one person might be having a couple of cups of tea a day with a bit of milk and somebody else is having 15 cups of tea with three, with three sweeteners yeah. <laughs> which has happened That's before um, crazy, yeah um then i go through their diet and i know that people miss things out and people often tell me what they think i want to hear i but they're scared to tell you the real truth yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So very often I'll go through diet last and then I have a separate chocolate question because people rarely tell me that they eat chocolate and I have to say to eat chocolate and then, oh yes, I eat chocolate. So I do what I can to get the information. And <laughs> while I'm doing that, hopefully I'm kind of building rapport with the person mm-hmm. so they they feel that they can trust me. Yeah, that they trust Because uh-huh. yeah. you can't just come, you know, sometimes somebody will tell me something in the first minute that I'll think, well, there's, there's your answer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I can't kind of go, bang, that's your, that's your problem mm-hmm. there because they're like, oh, who do you think you are? Just, you know, so you need to, you need to get that break trust. It and break it uh-huh. mm-hmm. And then at some point I may tell them exactly the same thing, but they will accept it much more if I've actually had a bit of a chat with them about different things, first of all. And... Sometimes I might give them recommendations, but usually then I'll do the test. So the test itself is a very strange thing. Um, it's an electronic device, and basically the way it, what they do is they hold a metal rod in one hand and they place the other hand flat on the table, and I have a kind of stylus thing that I press on their finger and it picks up a reading of their energy through their skin. And into the system, I have these little um, vials, little bottles, which contain fluid, which has the frequency of all the different things that I'm testing. So everything has its own frequency. Wow. Sounds like a ghost finding device or it, something. It's kind of like a lie detector test. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit's in here. <laughs> and it's difficult. I mean, it was very difficult for me to get my head around it because it's we're used to chemistry where you look in somebody's blood and you can see something. Mm-hmm. This is not. This is based on physics and quantum physics. So it's, it's, a, it's an unusual thing. Amazing. And... I mean, you've had it done, yeah. so you can hear the tone and the tone should stay consistent every time I press on the finger and there's a little gauge that comes up. And when I place into the system something that the body's quite comfortable with, their energy won't change. But if I place in something that creates a kind of stress reaction, then their energy dips, the, the person won't feel changes. it, and the frequency changes and you hear the tone kind of go... Rrr. And it's it's quite a... It, it, I don't know if visceral is the right word, but when people hear, they go, oh my God, mm-hmm. <laughs> my body didn't like that. What was yeah. that? Oh, that's chocolate or that's, you know, wheat, wheat or, yeah. and they can actually hear it mm-hmm. and they can see it. Um, and I will explain that, you know, this is not telling us that this is causing your IBS or this is causing your eczema. This is just saying that these substances are creating a bit of stress. Mm-hmm. And it may be that that particular substance is directly causing your skin to flare up. Or it may be that it's causing stress, and that stress, wherever it's mm-hmm. all coming from, is causing your skin to flare up. So it could be a direct link, or it could just be a contributing factor. But the idea then is that the person takes the test results, and they do and they do their own experiment, and they take these things out of their diet and see what happens, and I advise them how to kind of do that. Mm-hmm. But I'm also going to say, but you you know, it's important to chew your food well to eat slowly you know rushing out at lunch and coming back and eating something at your desk you're probably going to get a sore stomach later you know Mm -hmm. so I I kind of try to educate them in those kind of things I talk about caffeine and talk about water and how you combine foods and just whatever I can whatever I whatever information I have that I think will be helpful for that person and I'll tell them stories like I've been with you guys Mm -hmm. like you know oh this person came and this is what happened to them and I'll quite often tell quite a lot of things about myself because well, then people can relate to you. I mean, yeah, even what I you're go, talking you know, about, what your diet was <laughs> like. Never get irritable. Yes, yeah, so God, I was a nightmare until I stopped But it's sugar, actually you know? good to hear that because I never thought that at all. Like, you know, with just with Stephen telling me and what the nature yeah. of what you do. So you coming in saying, oh, well, I smoked, I was on coffees oh, yeah, and all that. Terrible. For me, it's like that's proud to hear because yeah. you've transitioned from it and you've yeah. actually taken the action with the knowledge. Yeah. But that's half of it. You know, again, people get the knowledge but don't act. 
So it is the fact that you've done that. That's why that is powerful for people because they're like, well, I've, I'm doing that. If she's done it, I can do it. Yeah. It's yeah. about how important you regard your health as well, though. Yeah. You, yeah. you will mm-hmm. act if you take it serious enough. Yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, people have really got care. the knowledge is there. We, we're talking about it now. And it's like, if you care enough about yourself, you will make the changes. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do you know what one, I mean? One of the things that I will, I said it to a girl today, which is a sense but weird. I say, if you do this now, this is a difficult thing to do. There's no doubt about it. We're asking you to make quite major changes you need to start thinking what you're eating you need to plan you need to probably take your lunch avoiding to work with some you. of your favorite things you need to be eating differently from other people because your friends are going to greg's and you're not you know but if you make this effort now and if you do that and you feel so much better your future self in 10 years time you will look back and think thank you thank you for doing that mm-hmm. absolutely <laughs> thank you for thank you for going through the effort for me to to, exactly. to make that change you almost need to look at yourself like that don't you yeah you know your self-preservation the, uh-huh. you, you're, it's an investment you're, you're doing it for your future self. You invest in plenty of other things so why not invest yeah. in the most yeah. important thing i mean yeah. it's like creating those neural pathways those isn't it yeah. because it's like you learn yourself out of things so it's like after a while of smoking or whatever you're kind of yeah. like well this is me this is who i am yeah i mean i can't uh, believe that i you're over I smoked it. <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> I mean, it's just, I can't even believe that I lived on bars mm-hmm. of chocolate. At the same time, though, ridiculous. do you not think that has shaped you to who you are now because of those experiences? That, again, you are in a position where you can say to somebody, look, you can't do that. Because see if you had always been clean living, yeah. you don't know about someone that oh, lives like that. I'd be so smug. So then, then you're <laughs> smug on your, your pedestal, like, well, yeah. I know how to yeah. eat right. The fact yeah. you've been fact through you've that through wave, it, exactly. It has actually yeah. a lot to the story. And, and it relates to again the whole business about trying to help people and mm. relate relating to them yeah, yeah. and the fact obviously that you did yeah. smoke or whatever does relate to a lot of people who are maybe trying their best to kick it or uh-huh. they're close to kicking it and, yeah you know I know what it I know what it feels like to feel just chronically rubbish yep and yeah. I know what it feels like to feel much, uh, to feel much much better and I also know that when I you know there are times when I might eat something which actually I know is not doing me any good and I pay the price and I know mm-hmm. that that's what's caused it. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for me, it's a kind of no brainer. It's like, well, why would, why would I do that? I'm still on the edge where I know something's going to cause it and I yeah. still sometimes do it yeah. because I'll, the enjoyment. Well, yeah. it's, uh, you've got to live yeah. life but as well. As well, but I'm, I'm at that point where there's a nice balance that I'm kind of getting closer yeah. to and I'm not as anywhere near as bad as what I was. So even, do you know what you were talking about before? It was really interesting is when you start really listening to your body and, and getting it right. Mm. It's like you repair the gut biome and mm. then you can actually have the off yeah. something and you yeah. don't Because you're feel strong bad. enough yeah. to take it. Yeah. You know, I find that fascinating as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Because also, you, well, stress is, an, is a cumulative thing. So if you have been consuming things that are causing your body stress for years and years, the effects of that can be quite long lasting. But when you remove that stress and yeah, the body will start to heal and rebalance mm. and then you, you can cope with stress better. Uh, right. So you can't cope with prolonged stress, mm. but you can cope with little bits of stress and you, and you will recover from it much quicker. Yeah. What's your thoughts on like um, sort of alkaline and acidity and things like that? Because I've been looking into that a wee bit more recently, like and even that, like, you know, I've been like eggs and mushrooms, mm. you know, ones that we eat a lot are like very highly acidic. And it's like, what, what, what's your well, thoughts on all that? the way that I would look at it is the most alkalizing thing you can eat is lots of green vegetables. Mm-hmm. It's all about balance. The Western diet is particularly acid forming. So the, you know, the refined flours and the, the red meat and what have you. I'm not, I'm not like a, against eating red meat. I'm a, I wouldn't eat processed pork. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had pigs in blankets at Christmas, so yes, I did. But I mean, <laughs> Christmas though, <right>? yeah. <laughs> Heresy! It's Christmas. It's Christmas. That's why I've got a cold now, probably. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, if you just love nothing but steak, you'd be very, very acidic. But if you balance it with lots and lots of green vegetables, it, okay. it's, it's very much about, about balance. There's a guy, Jordan Peterson, who... Um, he had some serious uh, problems, health problems, and he went through an elimination diet, mm. and he got it down to just having red meat and green veg, mm. but he was still getting these problems, and he's now just on a completely red meat diet, mm. and he says he's never felt better. Mm. Now, I get, obviously, there's anomalies you could pluck out. Because everybody's different. Everyone's yeah. totally yeah. different, but it's like the whole thing about mono-eating and, and not having too many different variations mm. at one time, and just giving your body that one thing to, mm. to, to think about and digest. Yeah. Well, there's there's food combining, which is where you don't have things that are 
a high carb and high protein at the same meal and people mm-hmm. can find that they digest much better if you keep those things separate yeah. so it's hard to comment on his issue because I don't know what the problem was yeah. if it was a digestive issue remember then what that was I just I think I mean his was, daughter uh, suffered a lot as well it was a real joint it was like joint issues I think it yeah. was mm. um, from there was memory. all sorts it was all sorts but even his daughter was like really really ill yeah. and then she, she refined it down to like that yeah. sort of car carnivorous yeah. diet or whatever it is and, and it was high he feels good but again that's it everyone's different it's, it's yeah. like drugs or coffee or that everyone exactly. takes a different effect exactly. it's like and, you know, alcohol you know somebody I mean? could be like really sensitive to carrots mm-hmm. and you know you'd think well what's, wrong, what, what's wrong with a carrot but if it's not right for their body then they could get reactions so he might be somebody that was really sensitive to spinach and might yeah. be lots of green mm-hmm. veg with spinach in it and not that, coping well with it so. so obviously in the, the world that we're living in now nutrition wise we've had a wee chat earlier what's your mm. thoughts on the whole sort of veganism thing and again what we were talking about like morally it's, it's cool it's fine I think it's, it's a choice that's mm. acceptable I really don't understand the pure anti-vegan thing you know be like have you seen this protest people are throwing these vegan sausage rolls in the bin for, oh, for Greg's. Just, it just sounds daft. Like, like, so doing... there's these protests, all these meat eaters are like, uh, I'm not eating that and they're throwing it in the bin, right? <laughs> Which is just, it's, it's just pathetic, what, man. Uh, but what we were talking about, just being vegan doesn't necessarily mean you're actually healthy. No. So how do you stay healthy as a vegan as opposed to like just shouting vegan but you're eating a, a white roll and, and, and all whatever you're well, eating? Well, it, it's about having a plant-based diet which is so so you could be vegan and eat a plant based diet or you could eat a plant based diet and not actually be vegan because mm-hmm. you could still be you know wearing leather shoes or whatever um but yeah people can be vegan and live on you know biscuits and pasta mm-hmm. and tomato sauce and a lot of them do yeah and yeah, yeah and a, a lot of young people a lot of you know students become vegan because they you know a lot of very sensitive people you know it's it's understandable why it happens um and but and but they that. don't actually have the money to go and buy decent food, so they end up yeah you know eating noodles and um, they can end up very very low in B vitamins for one thing, B twelve, mm-hmm. um, low in magnesium, low in zinc. All of these things are needed for your mental health, so then they can end up with issues with anxiety. Um, so yeah, I mean a, a plant based diet I would say is a healthy mm-hmm. diet, but vegan is not necessarily. Cause it, but it's it's a it's an the important way difference. Yeah, very important for yeah. people just getting into it. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, you know, it really is just about having that balance. I suppose. Mm. Well, it does stretch to what you're talking about, like, it, like even having leather boots. I mean, that you know, if you're truly vegan, that is exactly it. You shouldn't be you using shouldn't, anything. Yeah. It's should, not just yeah. your diet. You shouldn't have yeah. a cat either. You yeah. know, it's like one of those ones, like cat food, or you know, yeah. if you're mm. truly going down that mm. route, then mm. you know, it's animals that you keep. You know, that's a controversial yeah. statement. Apparently, you <laughs> I know because I know because we all we it's know true. so many vegans with cats. Apparently, you shouldn't eat avocados either because they take the, they take the bees to pollinate the. The yes. Avocados. Uh huh. You can go truly down the rabbit hole with any source, really. You yeah. can't go down a rabbit hole because that. Well, yeah. that's, that's not very <laughs> <Hey, I'm out. laughs> <laughs> I like that. So what I'd like, so right, normal, uh, right, non-vegan anything, right? Someone that's watching, it's like, look, I'm not vegan. I'm, I'm up for however. I just mm. want to be healthy. What What do you recommend in terms of where you buy your stuff? What to avoid? And what to like focus on, really? Oh my goodness, where to buy your stuff? It's such a complicated thing. So complicated it's because I know, like, even just myself with what I think I know. Yeah. I'm like that. Well, where would I go and buy all that then? Am I yeah. having to go? But then, can so I trust if, that source? Or? If you, if money was no object, mm-hmm. then you would go to an independent greengrocer's mm-hmm. and you would buy organic fruit and veg that doesn't come in a plastic bag. Yeah. Or you go to a farmer's market mm-hmm. or you or you would buy it directly. But unfortunately, money, money is an object. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that is not actually possible for most it's people. It's not feasible, no. It just isn't. So you kind of have to, you have, the way I was taught and the way I think is you have to make, you have to make judgments. So you have to kind of think, okay, I'm, I'm going to make a choice I'm going to go and buy something for my breakfast. So I could buy Cheerios or I could buy porridge. <laughs> um, so Cheerios, highly processed, full of sugar. Full of sugar. Okay, so let's look at porridge. So, okay, I could buy one of those, you know, these kind of porridge pots with the... Oh, so simple. Yeah. Let's look and see what's in that. <laughs> or I could buy a bag of... Um, organic... There's a company called Flavonins or something. Organic... Um, 
oh, it's with nothing in it. So that is better than that. So you, mm-hmm. you, you almost just keep, yeah. until you get to the point you can't afford it, and then you go, right, we'll have to go back to this one. Yeah. But often people are buying these convenience foods, and they're so expensive. Mm-hmm. And people say, oh, I couldn't afford to buy. And you think, well, you can, because you're buying your Starbucks and your... your you you're know, spending you're, 35 you're, pound a week on ah, coffees. Yeah. yeah, stop doing that and buy some decent veg instead. So it, it's often about just perspective and yeah. priorities, and it's not it's not about perfectionism because that's not well, you can't an option. That. You yeah. can't you can't achieve that unless you've got a personal chef and, yeah, yeah. and a bottomless you know yeah. pit of a bank balance. But it is about going okay. That is that's a better option than that, and it's about reading labels. I cannot stress that highly. You yeah. have to read labels done, and see and see what's so in things. Like that over recent yeah. years, you know. So what are people looking out for reading labels like what what would make you put something down as opposed to taking it okay so you you read what's in the food and you when you get to the stage that you don't recognize the words then you go right okay that's that's not something also fire yeah i couldn't go and buy that and make it myself now right some some like ready meals you could actually look at and go all right okay yeah i could have actually bought all these ingredients and cooked this and frozen it and make that Mm -hmm. so that actually might not be such a bad thing to have and better than if you bought something that's um you know just just all these kind of ridiculous chemicals emulsifiers and preservatives and you need to maybe have some level of those but there comes a point where you're going okay this has got you know modified maize starch and this has got hydrolyzed vegetable and it's and it's just one chemical after the other Mm -hmm. so then you find something that's got less and you go that's better than that and you know and the best the best thing is to buy you know fish, meat, fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts and you make it yourself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and rice, brown rice and sweet potatoes and you can make perfectly good food yeah. and, that, and it's not that expensive to do that's it, that's a rule of thumb isn't it yeah. you know, just check the labels and you know, I notice as well like some the, the, the main, main allergens are highlighted in bold usually yeah. Yeah. so if you go and see yourself for a test yeah. you'll know for me so I'll immediately go right wheat yeah you can okay, see so that. what kind of wheat is this, it's in a packet probably should avoid that yeah, yeah. 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 you know um, I was going to say as well an interesting thing you said you touched on it earlier is that things were always organic yes and they didn't call them organic it was just food and now they have to differentiate between this is organic and this is full of pesticides mm-hmm. <laughs> but they shouldn't actually be calling they should actually have food and food that's full of pesticides you know what I mean they should, mm-hmm. they should, mar- they should present it differently mm-hmm. so yeah. they should actually say um, like rather than saying this is sugar free diluting juice they should say this is this is sweetened with artificial chemicals they should be putting that <laughs> well, on the front actually, of it yeah. that's, that's one that's thing more I, true. Yeah, I commend the Americans on they tell you because mm. I, me and uh, my friend there recently went to uh, an American candy store right and uh, we went and bought some terrible things oh I absolutely did I some terrible things I actually messaged Corey he was like no way he was so happy though, right and um but like on the packs of sweets and that is like artificially flavoured sweets. Yes. And yeah. they actually tell you. Yeah. I'm like, ah, man, do you know what? How can at least you, you know. You at least yeah. you know. Yeah. Over here it's like, you know, no artificial colourings and yes. uh, you know, all natural flavours yeah. added and all that. Yeah. It's part of the marketing thing. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, yeah, but it's funny in America, just like, nah, artificially flavoured. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, woo! Do you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> yeah, because here they can, it could say free from artificial colours, free from artificial flavourings, free from, but it wouldn't say but does contain preservatives. Do you know what I mean? It won't put in what it does have. Yeah, yeah. And so people are seduced by that and they think, oh, this, mm. this must it's be good. It's actually okay. It's actually okay when actually it's the not. The sugar-free thing, such yeah. a myth as well. Well, I suppose actually that's one thing I'd wrote. Like, what are kind of common myths that you come across or like, people that come in? Oh, come this. That, that, that may obviously that, be a difficult question, but... That, 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 that butter is butter. This is a classic one. Um, what do you put in your toast? Butter. What kind of butter is it? Well, it's just butter. Okay, does it come out of a tub with a lid on it? Does it come out of a wrapper? Well, it comes out of a tub with a lid on it. Okay, so it's spreadable butter. Well, it's butter. No, well, it's spreadable butter. You know. mm-hmm. So this is... So there used to be a time when butter came out of a wrapper in a block, mm-hmm. and that was butter. You put it in a wee metal dish when you put a wee metal, it cool, yeah. yeah. And then somebody worked out that if you blended it with... At the time, they would have used like hydrogenated oils, which have been tampered with and are not natural and they would produce these kind of margarines Mm -hmm. which apparently were so much better than butter and now we know they give you bell cancer and then we've kind of moved on from that and they have these spreadable butters and they used to be marketed as spreadable butter Mm -hmm. and I can't believe it's not butter and all this kind of stuff but people are so used to them that now they just call it butter Mm. so people will say I buy butter what kind of butter is it is lurpak butter okay but does it come out of a tub yes okay so it's spreadable butter 
and they look kind of confused because they don't actually buy butter that comes out of a block. So they've mm. been brought up with this stuff mm. that comes that out of a tub. Is that similar to margarine then? Or it's, is it better? It's, uh, I'd say it's probably less damaging, but I don't absolutely know. And, and my, I'm not a scientist, you know, I mm. don't do these experiments to find out. But my logic is that there was a time when they told people the margarine was fine and now they go well it's kind of like eating plastic yeah. <laughs> so maybe don't eat it so how many other you know the time when they said aspartame was fine yeah and so now there's a time when they advertise smoking that's yeah, my doctor's exactly. yeah well it's brand. learning yeah. that's yeah. learning and education yeah. growing though as yeah. well isn't it yeah but it is about having a healthy mistrust of these new things that they mm. produce and they tell us are fine because there was a time when they told us smoking was fine and you know yeah and now they tell us that they're not fine. So is it a matter of time before they tell us that lurk past bedable is not fine? Mm. So why not go back to eating just normal? But you could make butter yourself. I did it in school. You take milk in and you, sh- it would have been organic milk then, and you shake it and shake it and shake it and shake it and shake it. And, shake it. and then you, you know, you take off the, the curds and the whey and what have you, and you get the, the thick part and you shake that and you've got butter. I couldn't make lurk packs bedable. Right, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's funny as well because Lord Pack do the actual packeted blocks as well. Yeah, you know what I mean. So and, that uh, is, and that is butter. Uh-huh. Right, <laughs> but Lord Pack spreadable is butter blended with oil, uh-huh. and you think, okay, that might be fine, but it might not be fine, and I don't know. And so yeah. my my concern is to, you know, if I say to my clients, "Oh, go and eat that; it's fine," and then ten years down the line they go, "Do you know what that gives you bowel cancer?" I don't want to have that responsibility. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. just I, be open minded about it all. Really. I prefer to say, "Well, do you know what was your, you know, could you make it? Was your granny eating it? How long has it been in the market for? You know, do you, do you need to eat it, mm-hmm. or could you eat some? You know, yeah, that's could that's you eat some? You know, well. Do you need? Do, to do you actually something? need to need to eat that? That's really yeah. interesting. Um, so you know, it's well, it's, you it's about being no, thoughtful no. about it and thinking. I mean, it. I love I love butter. I know. I mean, it's great, but I won't be buying the obviously that one ongoing. You know, because <laughs> I usually try and get the. We've, we've got a dish, you know, yeah, yeah, where yeah. we put it in. But sometimes mm. you grab the the spreadable, thinking mm. it is. Yeah. It's yeah. just a clever market. Isn't it? Absolutely. Got you, don't yeah, they? absolutely. And then people expect that they should be able to bring this thing out of the fridge and. Um, it's laziness as well because yeah. you can't really spread. There was a whole thing on social media. It was like, um, and it was like going against actual butter because you couldn't spread it and it mm. wrecked your bread. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like you go out and try and spread it. So yeah. people went, well, I'll, I don't want that. Happen. I'll just buy I a don't spreadable want, one. You don't want know? wrecked bread, yeah. I but don't want my bread to be like that because I've eaten butter. Yet, you know? And yet people people lived with normal butter for generations and they just kept in a butter dish on the table. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't a big... And it was at room it temperature so uh, it was probably spreadable. Uh, yeah, 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 it wasn't a big problem. Uh, so. I mean, it's, it's, it is, it's fascinating as it because like, I mean, Scotland, especially Scotland and Britain really, is such a butter heavy nation. Mm. Like even you go to Italy, no one's really eating that much butter. You know, mm. it's not that big a thing. Um, and even then, it's very different. Mm. Um, so it is. It's strange, but you could. I actually answered the question amazingly because I was like, I thought that would maybe be a bit of a blanket question, but <laughs> you know, it is. It's good because like butter is like the number one thing. Like everyone has it in their fridge. Yeah. You know, whether it is margarine or not. I mean, I've never touched margarine really. You know, what I mean, and mm. I think you know we've always been advocates of actual butter. Yeah, you know, because actual butter again with the high fat is good for you, and there's yeah. so many con- misconceptions about fat mm-hmm. and like you know saturated fats, and you know mm-hmm. oh it's got low fat, it must mm-hmm. be the good one. Mm-hmm. Like well no, actually you're probably doing yourself a disjustice mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. missing out that fat mm-hmm. and replacing it with other mm-hmm. something. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? absolutely. And a lot of these you know, low fat foods they've just put in sugar or sweeteners or or you know, to replace yeah, it. Yeah, because it's, it's a processed food. Yeah, and the thing is, obviously we've been talking about quite a lot. Of what you would call not doom and gloom but like mm. you know for people they're getting a wake up call and the good news is is you can start now on oh, I t- immediately drink some more water yeah feel better that's the yeah. first thing yeah. you can it's do it's just like you know yeah. no, you don't need to worry anyone uh, no one needs to worry about it it's just mm. a case of going right well look I'm going to start making these changes have a little bit more awareness about what I'm buying mm. you know taking than, a bit more care in your, yourself li- yeah. it doesn't need to be like, maybe if you're having three coffees a day have maybe one cut it down mm. a yeah, bit yeah, that's mm. it. do you know what I mean like mm. we changes actually will mm. probably make a massive massive difference yeah. for people you know? I mean that when I started looking at my diet I change things over a period of time mm-hmm. so the coffee came out first and then the sandwiches came out and I would still eat pasta for dinner and fall asleep on the sofa um, but I didn't eat it during the day and then I think chocolate was the next thing and that was that was almost as hard as stopping it's smoking that was really, I ended up like, eating like tiny little squares of green and blacks that you could buy for 10 pence at a time um, 
and eventually came off chocolate and there was a there was a, a light bulb moment when I came off sugar and because that really because I just swapped the chocolate for cake basically and, and other things but um the, the, the sugar coming out was a big thing um when I gave up um, milk my acne cleared up <laughs> um but this this was over a number of years it was just one thing mm. and every time I did something I think oh that felt better I wonder what would happen if mm. I you know, and kept yeah, going. yeah. Oh, I wonder what happened if if never now swapped that yeah, for yeah, that yeah. and started eating more vegetables and changed my breakfast and it, it was a process. It was Again, a long process. Again, people with things like acne. I mean, I remember growing up with a couple of friends that had acne and stuff, and it was just like they were blasted with steroids, mm. you know, for such a young age. And it just never, you know, he's better now. Mm. But it was like even then, it was like you know, it just it was constantly so bad for him, mm. all over his back, his face, everything, you know. And it was like steroids, steroids, steroids. Yeah. And it's like actually, it might have been able to have been changed with a diet. And I, I seen a bunch of school, uh, high school uh, young people at Dumbarton there, and I asked them, and all of them had like a big bag of like. One has a big bag of Maltesers. Mm. The other had, like, like, you know, because you're, they're not um, in any constraints of their parents, so mm. they go, "Wow, we can go to Asda down to there and buy whatever we want." Mm. Like a litre and a half of Lucas Aid orange, mm-hmm. and like ba- bags of sweets box because of because they can. Yeah. Box of whispers. <laughs> that box story. Of for lunch and, and it's like, and then <laughs> you've got you're, you're wondering how your body is reacting and a acne or with mm. acne or like some whatever it may be not no attention going back to sit in a class mm. with all that with all of that I mean what's, sugar, what's, what's going on in your body if you eat mm. a box of whispers which we've mm. seen happen I see it in, I see it all the time like kids that they'll be sitting there right now right guys it's lunch I'm not hungry and you're like well what have you had today and like packs of quavers and two mm. chocolate bars like, I'm not hungry I'm just gonna eat this box of cookies or whatever and it's like, wee man, but you, why do you think you're getting thrown out of school and you've got no attention and things yeah. like that? Because when you're actually, you're not even ever drinking water or anything. I had to, I had to, I drink tea or I, I drink iron brew, I just get water on it, you know? And you're like, you know, they always try and hit you with that. And it's kind of like, I, see at a young age, right, you really do care less about what you're putting in your body. Like, it just, that is just the case, unfortunately. Oh, absolutely, yeah. They don't care. Yeah. And you're strong enough to fight a lot of it as mm. well because you're mm. still developing and growing. But it's like... How do we change that? It's even? got to be ch- changed like this. You know, it's a generational change mm. has to happen. They have to look back at the granny's diets. Well, as you what, say, what just go back on. to the old school. And mm. I, and, and you know, just again educating people as well. You know, that's availability now. That's it's financial freedom. You know, people can now get a job and have a wage like everyone from sixteen up. Mm-hmm. You know, so once that you know you have a nine hundred pounds in your bank account or whatever, you have got your wage and you're just like, well, I'm going to go and buy whatever I want because mm. nobody can tell me. Mm-hmm. and you're doing stuff essentially just to get loads of dopamine hits because mm. that's, yeah. that's all that's happening that's do you know what I mean that's yeah. you're like yes and it's it's the same with social media when you see the wee red light it's the mm. exact same thing mm. it's like everybody is becoming so addictive now mm. and then but then you've got the other side of the scale where it's like you know you've got someone that's so fixated on their diet that may even be suffering like anorexia or whatever mm. that are like oh I can only have an apple Mm. And it's like no, but that that's the other side of the scale where that's not good either. <laughs> Do mm. you know what I mean? Absolutely. So yeah. it's like we're living in such a confusing time mm. where you, information overload, isn't it? Like yeah. constant bombarded with what's mm. right, this argument, that argument, this food, that food. But mm-hmm. you know, it's a bit a balance, isn't it? That's Taking a lot of information and, and try to keep yourself mm-hmm. majority healthy, like you know, eighty mm-hmm. percent moderation. Time. That's <laughs> that, I think. Moderation yeah. 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 for your own sanity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think you have to. You have to live that sort of thing. I mean, again, the I watched the a thing and it was saying, you know, like the young person was like, oh, it's your parents that have failed you. And they were like, well, no, I was actually raised by social media. Like, mm. I was raised by YouTube and the things that I've watched. So when you're looking at a sort of false lifestyle yeah. of, you know, the cars and the money and this and that, then half of the stuff's rented in these videos and all that. So it's like people are like aspiring to be these things. Oh, well, what are they eating? How are they training? You know, it's like there's so much misinformation yeah. one, one, as well. One of the it's things that I often say to people, because I think in our culture, I think for women especially, mm-hmm. they, it's it's sort of ingrained for a lot of women that it's not it's selfish to look after yourself. And so they may have been brought up by some mum or gran or whatever who's looked after everybody and put themselves kind of last. And so yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. see that, that that's how you parent or that's how you mother or whatever. And so they'll kind of say, I don't have time. People actually say, I feed the kids, I don't feed myself. 
and you think, well, if you had another child, would you not feed feed that child? <laughs> you would. You'd find you'd feed that child as well. And I'll kind of sort of explain that if they don't look after themselves, then ultimately they will become unwell. And they can't look after the kids. And everybody else is going to suffer. Yeah. Yeah. And That's so, in actual fact, not looking after yourself is selfish because the people in your lives are going to be affected mm. by that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's um, a good point. Sometimes, well, I mean, like some, I mean, I, sometimes I suffer from a bit of bad breath. Sometimes, and I'm mm. wondering if that's related to my diet. You know, sometimes. Yeah, um, dairy can cause that. Um, so I'd be interested. Because you know I mean? <laughs> it, it, it comes thinking, and goes, so I'm thinking yeah. of what ailments that sometimes. Now, now, yeah. now, yeah. now that you start to think about it, though, because there's things that I'll know that you can play uh-huh. off that you actually might be able to eradicate with just we switches. Exactly. Diet, yeah. You know? yeah. And I would definitely be upfront in terms of what you eat and all that, you know, because yeah. I'm, you know, I don't. You need I, to be your life yourself. I don't, I don't, I, I how can that. you possibly give someone like a decent diagnosis if they're lying to you? You know what I mean? <laughs> I have a one coffee a day or oh, no sugar <laughs> that's seven coffees with three sugars what I mean I, know, I, know, I just I know. totally lie you know what I mean like, oh, no, my, my diet's good I drink a lot of water like, I've only drunk water in a week you know what I mean so no, I mean I'm good with water and that and I we, do we, try we, are, we genuinely do care, yeah. as you can tell you know, yeah. we are alright and any education is great yeah. and it, to boost what they mm-hmm. yeah. already are mm-hmm. like you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. but I've, I've been trying I've been yeah, saying yeah, to you yeah, you be, yeah definitely it's, uh, something should definitely do and I'm sure there'll be plenty of people watch this so I'm interested as well you know and it's great it's, like, it's really rewarding you said it earlier like for yeah. us see if we sit the three are sitting here and having a conversation and ten people go and actually sort out something Job that's done, causing man. them mm. a real issue mm. this is a feeling you must get all mm. the time that's amazing mm. you know and that's it. we do this with music production and people that like, would never thought for a second they could release a track yeah yeah, and, and we can do that for yeah. you. But not only even just that, actually, the music you release touches people's lives as well. Like people you'd never know, so you get Absolutely. messages for like Argentina, like this song got me through a breakup or my mum's funeral, and right. and you're like, what in the hell, man? I made that yeah. in a wee place in Dumbarton, but yeah. it's like it's actually <laughs> it, it, it's individual, isn't it? It's like how you take it, and again, it's the same to what your diet is. It's individual. What works for you is not going to work for me, exactly, and vice versa. Exactly. But it's about identifying and then focusing on what works yeah. for you. And we we don't all come into the world with a clean slate no we all come in with the toxicities from our mothers yeah the birth process can be different mm-hmm. um i was i've always been sensitive to dairy i believe and i was a ton of antibiotics up until the age of about three when they eventually took my tonsils out so that affected my system for the whole of my life so yeah. i would be health wise i would be different if that hadn't happened, mm-hmm. but it's like mm-hmm. that, you, there's no point in pushing and blame. No, because that happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it did happen. So, it's up so, to you, right, to so I have to deal with it. Yeah, so yeah. I, I am very sensitive to foods in a way that some people just can't really understand because they're not. Um, like my husband has got the constitution of steel. You know, he can just eat absolutely anything and nothing ever happens. Mm-hmm. But he didn't have antibiotics when yeah, he was growing up, it. you know, and he didn't have different stress that I had and different things. He's just a yeah. stronger It's the gut biome thing know? as well. You, yeah. you said to me before about antibiotics, they just like wreck that. Yeah. They don't just, they take out the bad and all the good yeah. stuff. And some of the good well. will replace, but there's some that's now known that just doesn't replace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's because again, people yeah. looking for solutions on a tablet, we've yeah. now abused that and now they don't work yeah, as well. Yeah, but I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of people that wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for antibiotics. No, of course. You know, so. No, of course. I mean, yeah. what, but just being in general, like people use them in the wrong way, which is now actually actually been detrimental because they don't work as well as they used to but i think in france if you get a prescription of antibiotics you then get a prescription for for probiotics so they understand about replacing right. that yeah, yeah. So that, that should be happening and yeah and that that should be happening is that just like your kefirs and certain yogurts and things like that well or? not if you're milk sensitive see i was going to say if you're dairy <laughs> what what would you do then for like your, um, your gut I'd, i can i would take one as a capsule but you can also there's a really good book called the clever guts diet by michael mosley and he's got recipes for like fermenting um sort of red cabbage and things that produce like making sauerkraut yourself right. which is really cheap to do and really easy and that creates lots of good bacteria and a bit that with your meals Ronda helps. Patrick talks about that so, so I correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah so you, you can Massive. you can have a diet that's good for your mm-hmm. for your gut flora but when I had my tonsils out when I was three um, and I did lots of antibiotics before that my aunt who was a I think she was a gynecologist in Canada said to my mum you need to make sure that she gets live yogurt to get the good bacteria back in so that was like the 60s <laughs> and that was known yeah and yet we're now in 2019 and people are still not being taught about that or being prescribed 
probiotics to help counteract the well, effects again, of Well, again, when your doctor doesn't do yeah. nutrition, yeah. Yeah. there you go. You know, again, people want to talk to the person that's got a bit of paper on the wall, yeah. and they'll listen to them over, you know, oh, pseudoscience, nonsense, yeah. you know, I, my doctor knows. And I said, but your doctor's not even asking about your diet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and that's that, you know, I left that day, because I am inquisitive, so I left, like, I was raging. You know, because I'm like, why are you trying to just pad me off in this? You've not even, yeah. you know, and then she was like, well, to be honest, I'd love to, but I don't know enough mm. to query on it, so I can't yeah. tell you something I don't know. Yeah. And half the time they're Googling your symptoms. Yeah. Well, I'll let me put it in the computer, you know, <laughs> and then you actually look around and Google that. <laughs> You yeah. know, so that's that's worrying as well. It's yeah. kind of like you know. Ah, you should never Google symptoms, should you? Well, I mean, straight away. I mean, that's just a death every time. <laughs> isn't it? Like, why have I got a sore cheek? Death. <laughs> You're probably because you lash. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so true. Did you hit your face on something <laughs> and you forgot? No. Right. So, that was so good. That was so good. Like My it pleasure. really was. Um, so where I'm can people, people find out about you, or, or if they well, want to take tests? Well, my website is um, Food Intolerance Test Glasgow. .co.uk um, or if you just put Caroline Tyler T-Y-L-E-R into Google you'll find me quite easily we'll include all that as well in the, the videos yeah. cool. and stuff and fantastic yeah we have links um, yeah so I we've been Escapade Studios this yes. is the, the Escapade show number 26 yes 26 yep. yeah well thanks so um, much Karen. Uh, 2019 wow we're in 2019 already amazing first one of the year as well and <laughs> what a way to start the year off everyone getting a bit healthier you know. this is it so. protect, protect those guts that's it Eat well, right. Yep, definitely. We'll catch you next time. Uh, thanks so much for coming down. It was brilliant to chat to you. Enjoyed it. Let's do it again. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.